Tyler, we need to come up with a theme song because this is the first official episode. So uh, I don't know how we're gonna do it, but we gotta we gotta record. I think I, I think we should just I think we should just free ball it. Free ball it. Freestyle. <laughs> freestyle. Sorry. <laughs> free. Ball. Yeah, I'm a great free balling rapper. <laughs> 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 so we just make some. Okay. Hey, it's still off the dome though. Oh, okay. So your penis. Well, <laughs> sure. <laughs> wow. So uh, do you want to just let's just make something up? Let's do it. Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beer. No, not and me. Smoking I'm not weed. me. I'm married. Oh, yeah, well, I'm married. Jake, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Off and off topic with Jake and Tyler. That was that's really bad. The, that's the theme song. I, don't think I mean, so. what, I'm just gonna put music under that. I, uh, you you should actually. That probably would be really hilarious if you just chopped it all up <laughs> and just put it. Well, in random great, spots. great. Now you're making me do more fucking work. You think well, I like you wanted, doing this shit? You wanted a podcast where you didn't have as much work, so I think you might in a week be like, "Man, I'm just bored." Uh, no, no. Uh, for you uh, that haven't watched the f- or watched, uh, listened to a number zero or the two uh, one shots that we released. Uh, this is off panel, off topic, and um, we used to do a conspiracy podcast called Tinfoil Radio. Uh, we took a we took a decision of uh, what we wanted to do. And it was it was it wasn't a very it, very hard decision. And while I yeah. did love the show mm. and love what I was doing, I just couldn't dedicate. I mean, that's not my full time job. Um, right. As much as I'd like it to be, it isn't. And it was fun. Yeah, and I'm glad that there are people that actually listened to it and enjoyed it. Um, it's just, but it got serious a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I think for my mental health, it's probably a good thing to stop and and yeah. and. and I just don't have the time to research as well because you and I both are working multiple jobs. Um, yeah. So we're we're just we, you know in, we're just kicking ass and we don't have time. <laughs> and for we that wanted shit. to do something <laughs> where we were still doing content together, but we weren't stuck to this very strict uh, story that we were trying to convey because mm-hmm. that's what we were doing in that show, and 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 I like doing that, mm-hmm. and, I, and that was good for that show, but. This is more conversational. This is more us just talking about things that we really love talking about, and that's pop culture. You know, whether it be a movie that we're, we just saw or a TV show that we're watching. And see, research like this will be fun because it's like, oh, I have to watch Loki. Uh, research for the old show, and again, the, oh god, the for- I have to watch this QAnon documentary. The, yeah, well, the for- the format of the show, which worked for the most part, but I mean, throughout the entire run of the show, I mean, Jake was had a lot of shit to do every week. And I mean, the format of the show was me showing up and reacting. Yeah. Um, and the couple and, times and I was, did research that, was okay, but that was by design. Fair, I wanted right, it to be Right. But it way. wasn't fair to you. And we started as, as the show kept going on, we realized, or we just kind of had this idea that we had to get more and more serious because of the shit that's going on. And we're not going to get into that here. But the point is, is that we felt like we had to talk about it more and more often. Yeah. We even had to stop Weird Summer for like one of those. I think our last episode. Well, I mean, the getter thing is fucking funny. Eh? Right. But <laughs> it doesn't really fit with, you know what I mean? So it was it's what we were like, trying to go for. Yeah. You know, and that was like a, a the day of yeah. uh, decision. And that honestly, one too, so. honestly, I, I love what we did. And I think this, the, the time that we spent on that was was great. Mm-hmm. And. This isn't going to be like a swan. I learned a lot about myself. <laughs> this this episode is not going to focus on that. It's it's not going to be a swan song for that um, show. That is its own thing, and we'll, we will have the discussion about why we came to the decision we did. I, and I do uh, for people that are friends with me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter or whatever. Mm. I think that I worded it in a too vague. <laughs> to make it seem like something bad really happened. Mm-hmm. Nothing bad happened. Yeah. We just agreed that it wasn't a John and Paul spill it like that. No. And it wasn't like it, it wasn't sickness related or anything like that. It was just, I, I'm just tired and yeah. I have a lot on my plate. Um, I mean, we joked about it on the show, but the marriage was, took a lot of, uh, as marriages always do, a lot of time, a lot of prep, and mm. and uh, that took away from research and took away from things I wanted to do. And you'll and I'm just much more busier. Well, your job now is wa- no. I'm working. A f- I'm going from a part time job to mm. a full time job. 
And the part-time job, a lot of that was like daily, like, okay, w- when you get there, you have to do some stuff, and then the rest yeah. of it is just kind of running the board. But yeah, where this is... Your new I'm, job, you're I'm much more proactive. doing much more things. Many, many more things. Many more things. <laughs> me, I'm, I'm me doing, more things. I have a lot more responsibilities and a lot more time, yeah. for, and uh, that that eats up. Yeah. And so, because of that, I want to do something a little bit more relaxed and more conversational. And that's where we are right now. That is how we got to off panel. That is how we off got to topic. off panel, off topic. You should um, put music under that. No, we're doing the first. The first take is the the first take. We're not. Jesus. Uh, some of the <laughs> and the, the beauty of this, I, I do want to take some of the concepts that we had for Tinfoil Radio and apply it to this show as well. We should definitely do a spooky summer and our spooky season. Mm. Um, not weird summer. Because, it, you know what? You know, we're past. That. I suggest we start off spooky season with the immortal Hulk. Uh, sure. But that's the thing. Yeah. That's another thing I wanted to say about this. That, uh, this is going to be a show that's going to cover. Whatever it, we're thinking about this week. So, like, this week is going to be very MCU-focused, but next week we, uh, we, we're we going to be talking about Green Lantern, Earth 1, Volume 1, and then the week after that, Earth 1, Volume 2. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be covering books. We're going to be covering, reviewing Movies, things, but we're TV also going to be having conversations. Yeah. And, yeah, so. And uh, we might go a little, uh, say it with me. Stop. And we might need a, and we might go a little, off topic. Uh, okay, so you ready? And we might even get a little off topic. 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 Uh, top. Yeah. Good job. Take one. Take two. No. <laughs> so uh, that's the channel trailer right there. <laughs> off topic. 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 Anyway, uh, yeah. so. This week, as I mentioned, it's going to be very MCU centric because because we just got our minds fucking blown yes. on Wednesday, boosh. Yeah. Now, did I tell you uh, before we go into the thing? Um, sure. All three uh, MCU shows thus far, I've stayed awake. Uh, WandaVision, I didn't because it was uh, it came out four o'clock our time, but Falcon and Winter Soldier and Loki have both come out at two a.m. our time. Yeah, it's mid- it midnight uh, West Coast. WandaVision was 2 o'clock West Coast. So, yeah, why? I don't know why they did I that. I don't way. either. But um, both the previous two shows, I stayed up late to watch every episode because I just couldn't wait till the morning. Uh, except for this past weekend, or this past week, I was exhausted. And I was like, I, I just don't have the strength for yeah. it. So I, I went to sleep. I, I set my alarm for like 6 a.m., got up, got some breakfast, and. Uh, Proceeded to have my fucking mind blown out my ass, dude. It was great. It was amazing. I was <laughs> blown away. We are going to do, first, we're going to do a spoiler-free kind of review because in case you haven't seen the whole series or the fi- finale yet, we don't want to spoiler things. And we will give you, like, a countdown. Like I'm not going to know. No, fuck you. Fuck them. Fuck they, n- they need to know that they fucked up because I put spoilers parentheses in the title so they should know 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 when we go well, you know you don't have to do that I mean we'll announce it for sure though. why don't you just put a time code on it like we used to because that's more work and this is a work free <laughs> show <laughs> all I'm doing is typing up a little shit I ain't doing fuck all oh. no uh, yeah we'll definitely tell you when we're doing spoilers for sure we will definitely let you know we're, so yeah let's, we're, let's what we're saying is we're gonna do like a chunk of it they know they're on okay, the internet fine. they know do you have the internet <laughs> i hope so how else are they gonna listen to the show they're shut up mobile data what we don't have the fucking dvds coming out <laughs> <laughs> um so so tyler what are your spoiler the three spoiler free thoughts on season one of loki um hiddleston it was born to play loki um he he just really knocks it out of the park every time. Every time. Uh, it's just when you think you've seen everything he can do as Loki, he does something else. And hats off to the creators for, you know, which he is one of. Uh, he's one of the producers. Uh, hats off to them for putting him in situations that were, you know, different from what. And and I liked how they... You've probably already seen episode one, so fuck you. I liked how... <laughs> They basically <laughs> gave this Loki variant the same arc in the MCU basically by showing him what would have happened had he stayed yeah. in the timeline. And it I, rocked I him to his core. Not right away, but 
because he, he was still yeah it accelerated that arc for him which was a good way to do I, it so that we're not like oh really yeah, i would say by the end there's a character arc but i right. I, I just feel like <sighs> this shouldn't have been a show this should have been a movie eh. i should have been a disney plus original movie i could see that uh but you would have to obviously chuck you know, ch- um, dude, carve they, out four dude, hours of dude, time. There are there are so many parts of this show that you could just scrap. Like what? The whole entire episode three, you could scrap that. Is that the lamentous one? Yeah, the purple one. The episode yeah. that's just like in a purple tint the whole time. Well, yeah, because but that, but there's no, a lot that, of no, there's no, a lot there's of there's no, a there's lot not. of exposition that is necessary. No, there's not. Yes, there is. Loki's bisexual. That's all that came out of that episode. You fucking asshole! This asshole. I called him the next day and I was like, I don't give a shit about that episode. I even said so, and I said the next day I was like, Ooh, Loki's bisexual. Big deal. That's the entire thing. And he's fucking using it on me now. Uh, what an ass. No, I no. Well, you're right. I. T- totally forgot about that we talked about that the next day yeah, and I even i I'm said with you. no and, and i don't think that that was i don't i'm not mad at it and be like no. oh this fucking woke news shit i'm not mad about that i'm no. saying no what i was saying I, is yeah what I, I agree i agree with you i was fucking with you but i i did agree with your your, your sentiment on that because i i think that it was just too short it, it, it was shorter than all the other episodes yeah. and it could have possibly gone on a little bit longer but we didn't <laughs> I just don't think that they advanced the TVA plot enough in that episode. It didn't advance, yeah, the plot of the series, and it, it didn't move and, and, anything and forward. I understand, and there's some issues that I have with the final episode, and we'll talk about that. Yep. Um, so what do we think about the TVA? I loved it. Um, I lent you that book where they're introduced in that Fantastic <laughs> Four, Walt Simonson. I just realized what? I never gave my thoughts. <laughs> yeah, dude. What are you talking no, about? No, yeah, my thoughts yeah. on... Um, See, it's it's more free form, everybody. All right, we, free we, balling. We're like thirty eight special. We hold on loosely. That's Tom Petty, dude. Oh wow! But we nice. don't let go. No, nope. because if you cling too tightly, you're gonna lose control. You're gonna, lose you're gonna control. go. Dear, dear, dear. Dude, stop! We're gonna get copyright striked. We were so good. <laughs> This is Dan from 38 Special. You, you guys, guys have been fucking served. killed it. You guys have been Here's served. Here's your letter, you asshole. Asshole. No, they bring us on stage, and they're like, you got to do this because we're old now. As soon as you settle, I can have lunch. Have you ever seen that movie Rockstar that stars Mark Wahlberg? No. That li- the, there's literally a plot in this movie. Well, it happened with the Judas Priest, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, they pull him out of the crowd, and he becomes the lead singer because the lead singer quits. It's a really dumb. That's pretty neat. Twenty. I always had dreams of that happening, but it twenty-one year old movie that came out in two thousand. When I was uh, when I went to Lollapalooza in '93 and saw Alice in Chains, they were my favorite band ever, and I had this dream of being pulled on stage to sing Rooster with them. And I actually saw Lane Staley and uh, Jerry Cantrell riding around the fairgrounds on a oh, yeah. golf cart, and they said, "Nice shirt," and drove by. Nice. And I, and I told you earlier that day before we left, I had the cover for Dirt. And I was like, I should bring this just in case. And I'm like, that's dumb. None of that shit's going to yeah. happen. I left it at home. And of course, they literally stopped five feet away from me. Nice shirt. And dr- I got this I got CD. CD. <laughs> like, you fucking asshole. Anyway, so. Nice. <laughs> what? Okay. Ever nice since what? we got out of the bunker, we've been watching so much shows. and We've been, f- we've fucking been just. A f- lot of gas. Yeah. Farting. Us there, it must have been under compression down there I, or something. Man. I'm just now getting my sight back, like getting used <laughs> to the sun. It's amazing. Uh, people that don't listen to Tinfoil would be like, what the fuck what are the these fuck? two talking about? Just know that we were isolated. If you followed us to this podcast, we appreciate you. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I loved. Handelson as well. I think, yeah, he is just. This is what happens when you put an actor in a show where he's played a character for ten plus years. Like he just under he knows what makes Loki tick. He mm-hmm. knows how to play this character, and I like that. Um, I don't really like the whole love interest triangle. Uh, triangle. <laughs> Angle. Angle. I was going to say triangle, but oh, I guess yeah. unless he's in love with Mo- uh, Mobius. Well, so are, are, do you have a problem with him being in love with himself? Uh, no. I just think that it's, I don't know. I, I just didn't. I didn't like her at first. I didn't like the relationship. Okay. And it's not because it's a, a, of who the character is. I wanted um, to see him fuck. I don't know. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. <laughs> I would have preferred it not to have. I just, I hate that modern storytelling 
doesn't allow for it not to have a romantic lead. Wait a second. Are you are you out of your fucking mind? Hang on. I'm saying the real romantic. No, time out. No, no. What I'm saying is if Loki's bisexual, Whoa. then the romantic lead of this show should have been Mobius. I want to see those two together because I like their relationship a hell of a lot more than I liked his relationship with Sylvie. Okay, I'll give you that, but I'll say this too. It adds so much to the subtext of the story. He's just masturbating. Not, not, it's no, a variant it's of him. Not, it's not masturbating. Listen, if there was a you, okay, all right, and and a woman we're you. Get spoilers. <sighs> we're not spoiling anything. If there was a woman you, because no, you're right. We're only going to worry about spoilers for the last episode. If, if you were if, spoilers now, if you haven't watched the show. <laughs> If if there was a you who was a woman and she was like, hey, let's have sex, and you had sex with that woman who was you, she's, a variant of you, jacking it off. No. that is not just jacking it off. Then what is it? Tyler? You're having sex with another human being. Despite That's you. The, it's still a You're separate. Fucking yourself. It's still a separate human being. You don't have the thoughts of that person. You don't are have you the telepath? Experience. Are understand. you telepathically linked to that person, Tyler? Tyler I get what you're saying. Then it's a different fucking person. You stop shouting over no. me. No. I get what you're saying. No. I've had this conversation before because I think it's a funny conversation starter yeah. where I've said if you could go to a parallel universe uh, where it's y- you, mm. but it's the opposite sex. Would or you the have, same would if you, you have, are. Whatever. Yeah. But, I was, but I was using the opposite sex. Sure. Because that's where our experience is. Yes. Because I'm in a room full of straight people. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Cooper's bar. I hate that. You, you don't have to. You fucking bitch. You you knew that if you specified and said, "Well, we gotta include everybody," you knew that would throw me off. <laughs> so I would forget my train of thought. No, you were talking about parallel universes. Yes, yes, and if you could fuck a version of yourself that's the opposite sex, because I was in a room full of straight people, I said yes. A few others, I think it was like, it was four of us, and two of us said yes, two of us said no. And th- when I propose that question to other people, I get different reactions. And, but I did get a, a similar reaction to yours, which is you could, but it wouldn't be the same as fucking yourself. Because like you said, they have a different life experience than you do. What do we call the stranger? It's where you sit on your hand. Oh my God. Until it's numb. This got real blue, real fast. No, this is in a movie. This is in a fucking movie. I'm I saying, swear, forty I'm year old saying, virgin. The joke is made in that is, movie. This is earning us the hard no, e on uh, that's fine, iTunes. But we, you fucking, I'm gonna keep finish this. Fuck shit. it. Say whatever the fuck, fuck it, you man. want. Fuck. The stranger. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Okay. We gotta do this. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's gonna be fun too. I'm, if you crash your car because of that, I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, it, you you sit on your hand till it's numb, and then you jerk off with it. And Jesus Christ! Are you supposed, still doing this? Yes, I'm proving a point because it's supposed to be like somebody else is doing it. Now the entire thing about having sex is that there is somebody else involved. So, ergo. Since you are not that person, you are not that person. That is a version of you that yeah. is female with separate thoughts, experiences, and, and fucking likes and dislikes and shit. And you, okay? Mm-hmm. So that's another person involved. Automatically not masturbation. I'm just trying to say that she should, I like Sylvie being in it. And I think her, uh, I don't remember the actress's name, but. Sophia DiMartino. Uh, yes. She does a great job and I like great her. Great job. I, grew- I like Sylvie a lot. But what I'm saying is. I would have preferred it if them just being a platonic relationship. I don't like that they got romantically involved, but it does also make sense narratively because Loki's a narcissist, and of course he would fall in love with a version of himself. Absolutely, he so would. So we just talked around the entire thing back to the front. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, what, I, I, what, what, I, what I'm saying is <laughs> I understand. No, no. What I'm trying to say is, Tyler, I understand why you like the romantic okay. relationship. I'm saying I understand narratively... Oh. Why you like it. So you're saying I'm a narcissist. No, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I hate you. What do we think of Mobius? Uh, I, lo- I I think I told you this because uh, we would call each other sometimes after after he watched it. Oh, um, yeah. Because I usually watched it early. But Owen Wilson. Wow. You kinda, wow. You kind of can't have that show without him. No. Um, he plays off of Hiddleston in uh, one of the reviews I read about, you know, after the whole season was done was how amazing or was how great the dialogue was and it really was mm-hmm. between those two, two of them i don't know how much of it was improvised but honestly you got hiddleston who knows how to play loki 
Yeah. You got Mobius, Owen Wilson, who's a consummate professional and is just so good at exasperated, like, authority. Yeah. Well, and Owen Wilson's always kind of played that uh, that annoyed white if, guy if, character yeah, before. If I'm the director of that episode or yeah. anyone with them just talking, I'm like, okay, let's do the script and then we're going to do four or five takes of you guys just doing whatever the fuck. Because yeah. you know what? We're going to get some gold I, out well, of it. Well, and that's the thing, too. I, think, I don't know if any of it was improvised. I think the show worked better as a comedy honestly i think the show worked better when it leaned into the humor i mean yes there are parts that there was too much like the beginning of the first episode there's a lot of jokes and it's like okay but I, you know like let's and, it, and then it starts to take itself a little bit more seriously well there is a guy who's but, pruned right away i mean <laughs> yeah you know. but and i don't i don't want I don't, it's not like I want like Zack Snyder's Loki or you know I don't want it to be super fucking dark but by the way go see Zack Snyder's uh, Civil War on YouTube right now it's fucking hilarious um but <laughs> you were right all they did was like sat, uh, like unsaturate the film yeah but <laughs> I, I, I think the show only works as well as it does because of Owen Wilson not, well not that's true I think their relationship you're right and I think or, the or reason, rather, yeah, the, the reason, and I think yeah. the reason why, and I made that joke early in the sh- earlier in the show, but I think the reason why I don't like the relationship between Sylvie and Loki as much is mm. because I think I enjoyed the scenes with Owen Wilson more, and, and and I think the writing, I don't think the writing took a dip with Sylvie, but I just I prefer the dialogue and I prefer the exchange and I like the buddy cop, buddy time cop. Mm. idea for the show mm. and, I, and I understand what they were trying and I love what they did at the end of this but I, I just think that I was more invested in Loki being a time cop than I was him trying to find a version of himself understood understood um, I just um, to be really b- brutally honest I, I, I loved the last these three shows and we'll talk about them all as a whole but these three shows so far one of the things I've just loved is there's they found just this amazing way to to plug in easter eggs that may be inconsequential to the casual viewer but say something to fanboys like me and it's really cool because yeah. it's just like these shows are really good but there's also all this background shit like i'm pausing all the time like what the fuck was that when they went from uh the top in the void they went from the top down and they showed all that shit underground yeah. with the the throg yeah I had to pause. I was like, who the fuck is that, man? Like, and then I was like, holy shit. It's mm, Chris Hemsworth voiced it. Yeah, that's cool as hell. But anyway, um, I just, I, I, I liked those aspects of it. They, they plugged a lot of Easter eggs and it's not like just, it's not like product placement. It's not like, Hey, check it out. It's yellow jackets helmet. And well, it's did really you notice, big. Uh, did it's, you notice that the, in the second episode, the store that they go to is a rocks car, uh, rocks mart. Yeah, and which I is rocks on. Very, very familiar with rocks on. Um, they're in the comics. They're like the evil corporation in the yeah, comic books. Yeah, yeah. They're always in the background. They're always very few, very little to the to the rocks on. Well, I will say, rocks on corp is responsible for the death of Guardian in Alpha Flight. Yeah, that's for sure. I want. I'm. I'm actually interested if they're going to bring rocks on more, and I'm kind of surprised they didn't do it sooner. I but. think they're building it up to be kind of a sinister. I don't know. Like just kind of behind the scenes, like I don't know. I don't know. But um, I like how they keep. You know, it's always in the background. I'm sure they're going to bring it to the forefront at some point. What would you think of uh, all the different Lokis? I thought it was... Oh, uh, when I saw... I, I grew up with comic books, man. Um, this is probably one of the greatest eras of entertainment for somebody like me because all of this stuff that I grew up reading is on screen and I'm watching it happen mm-hmm. live now. It's fucking you cool. Had, you had Kermit Loki. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I liked, uh, that's why I liked had Richard E. Grant's uh, costume so much is because it looks exactly like the fucking costume from Avengers yeah. number one. Yeah. And that's just like, that's so, it's it's another one of those fan service callbacks, you know, but it works for the story though. You yeah. know, like nobody says like, that's a weird costume. I'll, I'll be wearing. honest. Uh, when I first, wa- I liked Kid Loki a lot. Yeah. He was pretty badass. My first reaction to it, because uh, you, you end episode four going into episode five with the, cause he gets pruned and you think Loki's dead. So then my mind, I thought Sylvie was going to be the lead. And then that was going to be like the Loki show was going to be, which her. was actually a good, uh, 
thought. I remember you telling me that. And I was Cooper. like, that, that's. Hey, get down. Sorry, folks. I, uh, got I remember a, I got you, a dog. I remember you. <laughs> In case you didn't know. I remember you saying that. And, uh, that actually made a lot of sense to me. Um, go ahead. Keep talking. <laughs> that actually made a lot of sense to me to have him, um, to have her be like the, the thing of the, the star of the show. But I've also read, um, yesterday I read an article where Tom Hiddleston has literally said if you play it forever, if they want him to, he will play it until for the rest of his life, which is rare for an actor. Yeah. Yeah. And the, I'm, I'm glad they nice did work if you can get that, it though, right? But I, I just, uh, I, I remember at first being like, ah, I don't know. And then I, I enjoyed episode five, but it, it, to me, it just feels like, I do think you could have told this story in a movie. Probably. I think you could have made this a two, a little over two hour movie. Yeah. And you could cut down. I mean, yeah, you, you do use it to your benefit because then you can explain um, what the TVA is and all that. But if you, in my mind, if you would have done this right at, instead of, uh, or you could have released Spider-Man at the same time, I guess. But mm. uh, if you release this right after Endgame, mm. You don't have to spend that whole sequence in the first episode recapping the other movies for this 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 version of uh, Loki. Loki, because you don't have that. You know, you could just show it, and the audience already knows. But you, well, you that's you don't need a, an extended scene to show him in the. I but know. that's what I think. I, it's I, hard to explain because I feel like that is useful. I think that is important to have, but it's also I think that that big recap scene was more for the audience than anyone yeah. else because it's like, hey, it's been a it's while ex- since Endgame. Like I said, when you said it could have been done in two hours, yeah, but there's it's a lot exposition. of exposition. It is, and we'll get to fucking exposition. I think dumps that's later. why. I think that's why I'm giving the shows a lot more patience, especially after WandaVision. I, and we'll get into all well, that, but you, after WandaVision, that was what, 10 episodes? Nine, I think. Yeah. Okay. But it was, it was long and uh, you know, those were like 30 minute episodes yes. too. So, and Falcon Winter Soldier were six, ep- six hour long episodes. Yeah. And I, I just remember at the end of WandaVision, I'm like, I'm not going to be like this with, for the rest of the shows because I, 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 I drove myself nuts trying to figure out what was going on in WandaVision. And if you don't know by now, then fuck you. It was, you know, it really wasn't that big of a reveal. I mean, no, it, it, wasn't. it was basically um, House of M, like in a suburb. Well, she, we'll, she, we'll talk. We'll yeah. talk more about that later when, um, when we talk about the. But other I shows. told myself not to get th- like that with the other shows. I told myself to give myself more patience because I knew that they were going to use these shows to provide more exposition yeah. than they can get in movies. They're going to use these to develop these characters more fully yeah. than they can in movies. So I got to give them props for doing it. Even though sometimes I'm like, all right, could have done with that, that lamentous. Yeah. I, I felt the same way. And yeah. yeah. Well, and in, in, um, you'll drive yourself crazy trying to do things. And, and, and yeah. I caught myself in the finale episode of, of Loki doing that. And I told, <laughs> I actually laughed because out loud, I'm like, just enjoy the show, Jake. Mm-hmm. That's what I had to remind myself because, uh, I paused it a couple times. If you get sidetracked from that and you try and start predicting that, and it goes back to what I've always said, is it's, it's cool to have theories. It's cool to, to have predictions. I mean, there's going to be a prediction portion of this very episode, but it's also, we don't own these properties. No. So don't get upset when they do things that you don't like because you also have to understand this is the story they're telling. Right. Yes. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship. They need us for money. We need them for entertainment, <laughs> but and it's good they, entertainment. they should, and they should, if we have like legitimate criticisms, mm-hmm. yes, I think they should listen to them, mm-hmm. but don't listen to this. Well, it should have been fucking, uh, whoever uh, Moby or, uh, should have been not Moby's, uh, Mephisto. And yeah. This is how you bring in the X-Men and then da, da, da. right. it's like, they don't have to tell that story, and and it is it goes also back to people being mad at Taskmaster, and how they portray Taskmaster in Black Widow. Now, personally, I understand that that is how he was in cartoons and comic books, and like he has that that fucking Brooklyn accent and all this. I liked him as I liked it being switched to this character that they have where it's just this fucking ter- also I like it being a Terminator dude also, I like it Taskmaster it's fucking Taskmaster and, shut up but he's he's a C-list villain yeah shut up and look 
it's much to me with that uh, that that costume. It looks much better in my mind. You, much you, more. It look it looks cooler to have it be a fucking Terminator. It's better this character being a Terminator. You want to get upset about some sort of casting like mistake or whatever in the MCU? Let's talk about Martin Starr, a white dude, being cast as Amadeus fucking Cho in The Incredible Hulk. Oh, and they also cast a dude as Samuel Stearns, but no leader so far. We don't, we don't, and, and we don't, I, we don't talk about it. And I gotta be honest, um, even if they do have a leader, I do not want it to be Ty fucking Burrell, dude. He's fine, but I don't he's know what not. the fuck you're talking about. We're moving forward. Ty Burrell is the guy from Modern Family, and he played I know who he is. Samuel Stearns in The Incredible Hulk. And at the dude, end, again, I don't I forget it. I'm just Thank you. No, I'm just saying that movie is so inconsequential. It doesn't really matter. It really matters. Is. It really is. <laughs> but the problem is that it's except canon for abominations though. coming back. The problem now. is that it's canon. Yeah, and abominations here. So Whatever. that's what I, I I don't like it when the MCU takes like a, a, a seemingly fan favorite character and kind of does a throwaway thing with them. I'm not saying Taskmaster is, but those two characters alone in that one movie are characters that have already come and gone, and now yeah, the powers of B and Marvel are like, well, we can't use them again, but. You could definitely in a be. little bit when we get into the spoiler heavy exposition of Loki, you might find out that's not truly the case. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, you ruined this might. whole thing. Also, sh- I'm just kidding. You I just lo- ruined it for you everybody. Get, you get, I'm sorry, and I didn't mean to cut you off what? the way I did. You got really angry. No, I keep did- forgetting. What? No, you just got upset. My with face is red. I was just giving you shit because I think that I'm super it- pissed. <laughs> No one talks like it, the MCU acts like yes it's canon, but they're like we don't talk about that fucking movie. They really don't. <laughs> Whereas like Dark World, everybody hates that movie, but they're like, well, we're gonna make that movie important now, just to spite right. You. And and uh, they're gonna constantly that's the keep same chipping thing away. with Abomination and Shang Chi. And what else is he gonna be in She Hulk? Maybe I don't, no, I I don't, don't know. know I don't know what they're doing. Tim Roth has been confirmed but, as. But that's what I'm saying of like the guy uh, in She Hulk cast. What I do love about what this show does is it does make the dark world more important and it, it, it does what Endgame tried to do mm. and I don't know I don't think Love and Thunder will try and make dark world matter well I guess it is because Jane's back but um, it's just interesting that that movie that I can't remember you don't think her being infected with the Aether will have anything to do with her being worthy of Mjolnir will it I don't know I have no great I have spoiled no Love and Thunder maybe Steve everybody. just gave it to her when he went back He's just like, hey, I got a feeling. <laughs> Gave it to her, all right. Oh, and here's the hammer, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I met a dog last night that can high-five. My dog can high-five. Oh, yeah. Let's see it. Just kidding. No, he's, he's laying down. I don't want to interrupt him. the leave show him. more than I already have. Just leave him. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the spoilers. That's, Everybody. that's where that let sleeping dogs lie thing comes from. Yeah. Spoilers. Thank you. Now we are in spoilers. So if you have not seen the finale to Loki season one, do yes. not listen to this. Stop. I'm ge- I'm ge- stop it. Stop it. I'm going to give you one more chance. Stop. Go watch it. Go watch it. Come back. Come back. I'm going to give you one more chance. Stop. Go watch it. Get off. Or no. Rub your pee. Get off. Come back. Come back. <laughs> Damn it. You got me all discombobulated. But that's right, it. That was warned. your last warning. You've been Fuck warned. You. We're in spoilers, motherfucker. Here's my finger. Kang the motherfucking <laughs> conqueror. <laughs> that was so cool. It wasn't Kang, but yes. It right. was first. Mm. I understand some criticisms that I have seen about this this particular episode too. and it's valid. Sure. I do think it is unconventional mm. to uh show your antagonist in the final episode and then have a 20 minute exposition dump. On your final episode. Uh, I liked that because but, I was looking for answers yeah. and I got them. And also, the guy's insane. But listen, that being said, I enjoyed this a lot yes. because of its implications. Because like we were talking about, um, it has essentially opened up the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse. So it's no longer just a you. I think it's the MCM now. Do you know what the uh, in the comic books what Kang's uh, real name is? He goes by many names. What is like? He goes by when Amortis, he was just a human he dude by, before he figured out everything. Oh yeah, it was Jonathan Richards. Nathaniel Richards. Nathaniel Richards. That's what. It who was. is a direct descendant it's Jonathan, of? It's Jonathan Majors who plays him. That's why I said that. Yeah. Of Reed Richards, yes. bitches. 
Yes. That is fucking cool. That's literally like the biggest implication to me is that fucking Reed Richards exists in the MCU. He has to. Well, yeah, that, that this is this implication is. Yeah, this, That's is, one this of them. is how they set up the Fantastic M- Four. The mutants always being around in just a different timeline. Yeah. They can have an Exiles can, movie, dude. Well, th- and that's <gasps> and that's the fun thing. You could and then you could also make X-Men self-contained again. Yes. Because they're saying, well, for my world there's no superhumans, there's just mutants. And they come in here and they help and then they go back to their world and that's how you do the X-Men first movie. Like there's so many things to go off of this. So Right. Essentially, it, it basically let's, breaks let's talk about it wide the episode for first every and then possibility. And then kind of work into our uh, uh, our phase four predictions. Um, so yeah, we get to they finally get to the end of time. Mm-hmm. Sylvie and Loki. Did we talk about Journey to Major's performance? We will. Okay. Um. So we, they go into this. They talk to uh, Miss Minutes, which is a very important dialogue because I, I was going into this episode, and we already had the reveal that the timekeepers aren't real; they're just androids. And after that moment, then I knew I go. Okay, they're gonna put Kang in this show. And I kept then, thinking of Mortis. That's stop, stop doing that. I hate when these these don't die because we're gonna get the comments. I don't care. He's Kang. Kang is all of these guys. I'm not calling it. I'm not gonna say. Well, this is a Mortis and this is Kang. It's fucking Kang the Conqueror. We he know that's what it is. He doesn't like me because I read comic books. No, he's it's because you do that motherfucker that pushes his well, uh, well, actually, he was immortal. Like, I fucking know who he was. <laughs> Son of a bitch. For, you know what? For all the fucking commenters. Big and- deal. You can fucking read, Tyler. <laughs> yes, he's immortal, but Whatever. he was originally cast as Kang the Conqueror. <laughs> And the villain itself, the, everyone talks about the blue motherfucker is Kang, all right? Purple and blue. <laughs> purple, green, and blue, actually. The skin's blue. His suit is purple. Oh, green. boy. This is going to be a fun show. Yeah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I fucking hate that shit. You're gatekeeping, Tyler. I'm what? Gatekeeping. What does that mean? You're saying like, oh, well, I know more than you. And da, da, da. No, I'm kidding. You're not gatekeeping. I'm just fucking with you. Any Hoosiers. I like telling people stuff because, um, you know what? Actually, his name isn't Immortus, motherfucker. It's he who remains. Well, I know that. So don't start with me. No, but I like uh, telling people that stuff because I know a lot of people who watch these movies that don't have never read a well, comic book. I in was going to get to that. Oh, I know you have, so I'll just leave it yes, alone. Yes, but yeah, he, he's playing Jeez. the. Uh, <laughs> He's a he's playing the Immortus version of Kang. Yeah, it's my thought, but yeah, it that's is. that's what people are speculating. Look, he's he's right. I hate to admit it, but he's right. Most of what I do is kind of irritating, and truly, they are all Kangs. Rama Tut is <laughs> Kang, Immortus is Kang, the Red Centurion is Kang, and you know what? They're all Nathaniel Richards, just different versions yeah, right. of them. No, and that's what I was trying to get at. So it is kind of silly in the comic books. However, in the comic books, they've become their own. Yeah, characters like Rama Tut is not Kang, even though Kang was well, Rama shit, Tut I mean, before he became Kang. Iron, it's a weird even, even shit. Iron Lad becomes. I Kang. don't go along with those Young Avengers storyline. I don't care. They're gonna set up Young Avengers. That's great, and I don't get the whole fucking draw of the Young Avengers. Why? What? What? What's the fucking it's Teen deal? Titans? That's just exactly. Fuck that's the, the only Titans. reason it exists. This is a teenage and superhero fuck, team. Why? I'm not a teenager. I don't give a shit. So anyway, yeah. So, so but all the teenage this, uh, this there's the, the only name of him is he who remains in the show, but it's it's definitely speculated that he's the Immortus version of Kang, and uh, we meet him in an elevator, and he, um, there's a, when that scene happens, I go, I go, I go, I said, holy fuck, out loud, because I was like, he lied, because Jonathan Major said he wasn't in the show. And uh, so he's in the. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like they're gonna do this. Like okay, because then I then I I had that speculation because going in, they talk about the 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 timekeeper getting killed, and then Miss Miss Minutes keeps saying he instead of they. So I was like, "Oh, she's she's implying King." That's what I kept thinking. And then he finally showed up, mm. and then we get that twenty minute. It felt like I don't know if it was twenty minutes, but it was a very extended monologue. Well, I not necessarily it. monologue, but exposition dump. I loved it. Um, I love the little, the the little miniatures. Lore. That was fucking cool as shit. The little Kangs. They had the little helmets and the fucking costumes on it. It was like, yeah. that's fucking Kang! If you had any doubts at all at that point. But I understand the, the... I do understand a lot of the criticisms behind this because 
it is. I, I think they do their best to try to explain to a broad audience, but it is a lot to take in at the end of this show that you're already kind of like, I, this is kind of weird and I don't know what's going on. And then you get to this scene. Maybe I'm a nerd, but I loved it. <laughs> well, no, I did too. But there's, there's obvious, I think there's obvious criticisms of the fact that you just pull this guy in last second to do all this exposition cool. to set up an, a, an, a movie. I was wanting answers and I got answers. A movie that, I don't know. <sighs> He's setting up the entire phase four. But here's my problem. Here's my problem with that. Not everybody's going to watch Loki. So a lot of people are going to go to the Ant-Man movie and be really fucking confused by who this Kang guy is. The other two shows are inconsequential. The, the, yes, they, they move the narrative forward for those characters, but at the end of the day, Sam's Captain America, and we've already talked about this uh, on uh, number zero, mm. when I said, I think audiences are smart enough to pick up that when he, got, when he gave him the shield, he became Captain America. Now, if you want more character and you want uh, a deeper story, then yes, you can watch the TV show, but you can honestly go and watch Cap 4, and I don't think you'd be lost. Whereas if you go and watch... Any of these other movies, if you don't watch Loki, you're going to be a little bit confused of like, who is this character? Well, it's your fault for not having Disney Plus, you fucking but punk. That's, why? <laughs> I have no patience for you. If you, no, if you but can't the, watch a TV show the, every the, week this is, this, and seven movies Tyler, a year. Tyler, this is what I'm worried about with this multiverse idea. Because now, Me too. I, and I, I was, while I was excited at first, now I'm a little worried. Because while I love the idea that they were like these little six issue miniseries runs in between events is what I was describing it as, like comic book terms. Yeah. It's just like when they have these fucking crossover issues and these event books, and I'm like, I don't want to read it. I want to read this storyline. I don't care about this. Move this narrative forward. The problem with uh, making that comic being books, said, yeah. I love Loki. Mm-hmm. I love the show. Yeah. I love that they brought in the TVA. I love what they did. Mm-hmm. But I can understand that there's some people out there that are like, I don't want to fucking. Why do I need to watch? six hours of this, six hours of this, and then, you know, I understand why people would be frustrated by they're like, I just want to watch the movies. Well, the problem with uh, making uh, comic books into movies and TV shows is that they no longer have the um, corner panel editor note that they do in the comics. <laughs> they should have those, like a little subtitle. Kind of. I think so. Um, you know, maybe just add, like, remember when you had, like, a DVD and they had, like, a trivia track? Yeah. And something would come up and you pressed OK and it yeah. took you to another thing? Maybe they should start doing that because but the I, editors I, I, don't... I, I, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. I am, I am worried about that because then that also might break yeah. it. That or break the fucking... Yeah. Unless there's an option at the beginning of the show when you're getting ready, there's, sure. like, a button to say, do you want... Or release it on notes. DVD with it. Maybe. And know. then that way people who, uh, whatever. Well, and, and I think that, and look, I know it sounds silly, but I do think that Netflix, and, and I know Netflix has done it mm. in the past, and I, and I do think they should release these streaming shows um, physical in case, yeah. in case somebody's like, I don't want to pay the, the 10 bucks a month or whatever to, to have, I, is that how so much gonna, Disney Plus is? I don't know. So you're going to pay the $60 for the season? That's stupid. Well, if they were going to binge it anyway. I don't know. Pay the it's, no. You got you got plenty of emails, fake emails. Get free trials. <laughs> no, uh, uh, so I'm sorry. We, just, we got off track I, because no, of that. No, no. Well, I, this I just, is the I, part I, of the show. But I want to finish. I, I want to clear. Okay, I want to clear my thing. Yeah. I do like the show. I love this scene a lot. Yeah. Me personally, I love this. Yeah, but I understand how I, I, I got uh, someone it off. <laughs> It's, what the fuck? It, 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 I understand how someone who doesn't watch this could be lost and not understand. Yeah. Anyway, continue, Tyler. Uh, I wanted to, for the audience um, who maybe doesn't know what the editors know, so, um, you know, cam- it's pretty simple. Comic panel or comic pages are divided up into panels, and uh, sometimes they'll reference something that happened in another book or an event or something. It'll be a little asterisk. It'll be a little asterisk next to our dialogue in the bubble. And then on the bottom of the uh, panel, there's an edit, you know, there's a, uh, as seen in da, 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 da. And they might give, they might be really, really detailed about it. Uh, um, the guy who did, I think it was Mark Grunewald edited, uh, Walt Simonson's run on Thor. And he was actually had a lot of fun with his editor's notes. Um, and, uh, they often, uh, uh are, are helpful. Are you worried? That but I'll, I'll tell you this. I've read, as long as I've read comic books, I have read books where they reference something. Right. And I didn't read that book and I had no desire to, and I wasn't going to, I was perfectly fine with the book that I was reading. Yeah. I'll say that. 
in terms of the I do understand the the concern because I kind of have the concern too. Yeah. I don't want to get caught up but, watching but all this shit. But you understand shit. that you and I are like, fuck it, give me all this shit. Right. But we'll we'll watch at it. At some point though, even I'm gonna be like Right. Do you see how many shows are coming out? Right. And movies. Well, there's four Star, this year. Like alone. all the Star Wars series, all the other fucking right? like, we haven't even heard anything about Armor Wars or any of the other MCU shit that's going on. Which, Ironheart, yeah. Fucking but I, Secret Invasion. In a way I kinda like it because it is supposed to be I but, yeah. It's it's hard because it feels yeah it is it, these <laughs> these things feel <laughs> impactful character ser- driven stories which are good yeah but in the grand scheme of things they kind of feel inconsequential and they're just there to set Little up the bit. next phase so I'm imagining Armor Wars and Ironheart and whatever else they're gonna do like what if is gonna be kind of this side thing but mm. what if is gonna come out of this is I think it's interesting that they revealed that it was good that there was going to be an overarching narrative in this series in what if like almost a week before the finale of Loki, which is, Hey, by the way, the entire fucking multiverse is at play. Yeah. And you know what it's going to lead to eventually secret wars. The second one, not the first one mm-hmm. where doom base, basically reality is going to the multiverse of war is going to re- result in reality breaking and doom is going to hold it together with his will which is what happened in the Secret Wars comic books. Mm. Mm-hmm. And they have like that. That's the Thor core. Did you hear about that? Mm-mm. It's an excellent fucking book. Uh, all the Thors in on Battle World in this Secret Wars series are all all the different Thors are, are the cops. And oh, they're like the Green Lantern Corps, but Thor more like a law and order, more like a cops on Earth type of thing. Like seriously, like um, they they actually oh, like, they so go they, like, drinking patrol, and shit. They, and, like, they patrol and space, <laughs> right? But here's the thing: all these Dude, that sounds awesome. I all these that. Jane Fosters are getting killed off, and only one of the Thor Thors wants to investigate. All the other Thors are trying to con- convince him not to, and it's really excellent. It's like Law and Order, but it's all Thors <laughs> in a in a comic book. I'll let you borrow it when I find it, but it's really fucking great. Some of the other stuff wasn't that great. I mean, you can have fun with matchup mashups and stuff. Yeah, they came out of it with the secret warps, well, which was fun. Well, but uh, w- and I don't know. I would love to see the original Secret Wars, and I always had a plan for Fantastic Four to get introduced into the yeah, MCU well, back in the day. Yeah. Well, and, and and the thing is, we're I think we're getting. Two more. Oh, we're getting too much into the nerdy shit. Let's well, get no, back to Well, no, we're getting the- into the, the phase four predictions and oh, stuff. Yeah. And, yep. and that's fine because that's, yeah. that's where I want the conversation oh, okay. to go. Because uh, I, I, what this does, essentially what happens with, with him, he never says his name. They just refer to him as he who remains. And, mm-hmm. and I was telling you this uh, when we He's talked. He's credited as he who remains yeah. in the credits too. So. When, when we talked after I watched it, uh, I remember saying like it was such a sly little like wink and tongue in cheek line I, a delivery as well, but just the line itself is, you know, I had a lot of names, a ruler, a conqueror, and I was just like, oh, you sons of bitches! Like I know, that, and it's so funny because they never emphasize the word conqueror. A yeah. conqueror, and it was yeah. like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, and it, I think it's played really well. I, I love Jonathan Majors kicks ass, dude. I will watch. Well, him I, I've anything. been a Jonathan Majors stand big time since Lovecraft Country because I fucking love that show. I and, think and him by and the way, uh, fuck you HBO Max for canceling that yeah, shit. Fuck him you. and oh god, what's your name? A uh, Jesse. Uh, no. It's Smollett, but it's not. Um, I think I know. I think it is. It's his bro. It's his sister. His sister yeah, yeah Sm- I'll, I'll look it up. You keep Smollett. Talking. Uh, that's in it. She's great too. But I, I've been a. I became a huge Jonathan Majors fan after that. I think his performance is great, and that's why I loved his performance in this because it's such a departure from the character that he played in Lovecraft Country, where this is a little bit more. Uh, over the top, a little bit more. Journey Smollett. Journey Smollett, yes. Uh, she's fantastic. Uh, she's also in Birds of Prey. Um, she's, uh, you know, oftentimes you hear about character actors, and generally you, you think about uh, male character actors because, you know, just for whatever reason I do. But, you know, I forget about, like, Meryl Streep. Um, actresses like that who can truly uh, Charlize Theron who can truly embody like an entire character and I will say this I, I saw Birds of Prey I was very very interested in uh, the Black Canary character because uh, I like Black Canary in the comics and also she was really hot in the movie 
And then I watched Lovecraft Country, and I paid a lot of attention to that character because she was a big part of it and also very attractive. I mean, she's the co-lead. He had to tell me that they were the same fucking actress. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, you cannot, honestly, no, yeah. if, if well, you show- Especially if you do what I did and you watch Birds of Prey and then you watch Lovecraft Which Country is what like I did. did. Yeah. They're two very different characters. And I, and I think- A lot of it has to do with Black Canary's hair in, in Birds yeah. of Prey. Um, and her outfit is different because uh, yeah, she's very, Lovecraft Country is more of like a period piece. Like 50s and then in- 60s, in, yeah. Right, like and 50s, then she's 60s more like area. punk and like, you know, yeah. kind of gutter- Gutter trash. That's a, not. Accurate. Yeah, when you, you look know, at like you know 60s, I mean. like Jim Crow era America. Right, yeah. And it burns the look at yeah. modern day superhero movie. <laughs> Very different. Yeah. Different. Uh, but that's a credit movies. to me. That's a credit to her, just her acting range is that yeah. I had no fucking clue. And that's what I love about. And she sang, I think, herself in Birds of Prey, didn't she? And I think it's similar in this with Jonathan. Yes, yeah, she did. I don't know if that was actually her or not, but sure. her, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. But very talented actress. Yes. Yeah. And that and that goes back to the Jonathan Majors performance. Like I was saying, it, it, he he plays such a different character in this than he did in Lovecraft Country. And you yeah. and I and I'm wonder, And you and I talked about this. I'm wondering. He's so much more. Is, stoic are they going in Phase Four? Are they going to make you know Jonathan Majors play? Kang differently, all the different versions of Kang differently, because this this is speculated this to be the Immortus version. Mm -hmm. uh, is he going to play? First of all, who? Which version of him are we getting in Quantum Media? Are we getting Kang the Conqueror? And if that's the because I think they did explicitly say that. They yeah, they've said that he's been cast as Kang. I don't know. Well, then he's going to play that that completely yeah, different. That's right. going to be the militant, angry, like vengeful type. I kind of can't wait to see that character as like just a fucking bad fucking dude, man. Oh yeah, like a, oh, a yeah. guy that nuts, and then just being all powerful and also also fucking do you ruthless. Think he's, do you think he's going to show up in Spider Man? No I way. Home. I I hope they I hope they give I hope they treat him like Thanos. Um, not completely like it, but I hope they treat him like they they kind of keep him in the background. Um, you know, not necessarily in in the foreground, kind of on the periphery until yeah, yeah. he comes out like with uh, Infinity War and Endgame um, is when he truly kind of came out and stuff. And maybe they could do the same thing with Secret Wars or whatever. Like if that's the next big we'll Avengers see. thing they could have. Because that worked really well to be well, a largely Thanos-centric film. This, Infinity War was yeah, it's, kind of... It's it, Thanos' movie. It was Thanos' movie. I would fucking totally pay to see a and movie you know and you know full funny. of Jonathan Majors playing different versions you know of the what's, same character. You know what's funny is people would argue that, that a lot of people like Infinity War more than Endgame because it's a Thanos movie. You could fucking call the next Avengers movie Avengers versus Fantastic Four because it's a book that was actually out at one point. Well, yeah, they fight. They always fight each other. There's but Avengers versus X-Men. This, this is how you lead yeah. into uh, Secret Wars and how you give Kang his own movie. Because he's the fucking descendant of Reed Richards, and you just mash yeah. all that shit up, and it comes out that Fantastic Four has been stuck. Well, and Mobius, in time Mobius by Kang in the, this in, whole time in the, in the six one six continuity. Mobius puts them on trial, right, for time crime. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he does. It's a great book. So a lot, that's why a lot of people thought that he was gonna that Mobius was gonna be what sets it up, but. Mm. Who knows? I, I I think that they probably will have him played a little bit differently, and. Uh, this could be um, like Avengers 1 where this is showing Thanos but not doing anything with him until much later. Or this could I be... Think a, it or, might. or it could be a completely different approach where they just put him everywhere. <laughs> and uh, Which it would be, get annoying, but then you look at the lineup. But the way that they you know, set it up... If you look up, at the lineup, it makes sense. And he was no a different home, character in each one. We don't know the fucking plot to no way. Right. Although Alfred Molina kind of just said, yeah, I'm in it. Uh, so this could be a Toby Maguire, bless your heart. We know you're in it, dude. Just so at well, <laughs> he's still trying to be like, no, so I'm not. Because this happened I'm now. Not. Now that opens it up. <laughs> yes, multiverse of madness. I'm assuming we'll deal with this, and uh, I'm assuming No Way Home will deal with this because <clears throat> while uh, Toby Maguire, they explicitly released a statement saying that he's starring in this movie, his first live action appearance since this, you know, since like 2009 or whatever, mm. and I was like. That's a weird press release. What was it? Saying that... No, it was announcing that this other movie that Tobey Maguire in... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
I'm like, that's a silly press release because you rarely see that. Now, have those been in the past? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming. Like like uh, when Schwarzenegger went back to acting after you know being the governor. I'm sure there's some article the like that. The governor. But John. Why, why would Tobey Maguire be that unless they're trying to do the, look, he's not in Spider-Man, everybody. He's not. And then Andrew Garfield keeps laughing it off nervously in conversation. He's like, no, I'm not in this <laughs> fucking movie. I don't know what you're talking about. Women are still attracted to me, aren't they? <laughs> I used to date him a stone. What the fuck? <laughs> That's his deflection. I don't know. <laughs> if I was Andrew Garfield, that would be mine. I used to date him a stone. Go fuck yourself. Get out of my life. Get out of my life. I've seen her yeah. naked. So I don't know if he'll be in those, but I, I no. but I, I, I do think it would be. Um, he might be in those, but I, what was the other one? God, Shang, I don't think he's going to be in Shang-Chi in the, te, uh, the Ten Rings. No. Why I, would he? Um, I think I, Shang-Chi and Eternals probably won't. He's probably not going to be in Love and Thunder. With it. Might be, but uh, I think I think they don't show him at all again until Quantum Mania, to be honest. Maybe. he might. He, yeah, I, I'm saying it's a possibility that he could show up in the Spider-Man movie, but I don't think he will. There was also a fan theory um, at, while we're on Phase 4. There was a fan theory that um, when uh, Wanda hears her children's voices at the very, very end of WandaVision. Didn't they change that? Yeah, they did. But what did they change? It they to, changed like some graphics, some of the uh, some of the FX. Oh, okay. Not much. Go ahead. Um, but when that happened is exactly when Sylvie killed He Who Remains and split open the multiverse. That's yeah. a fan theory. My, my theory is that they're going to keep Loki self-contained for the most part and say that since it's outside of the timeline and it doesn't run on the same time as everything else, they can just say that shit, Loki went to the TVA right after Endgame. And he well, no, get- he went after the first Avengers. Sh- sure. Yes, you're right. That's you're what right. this yeah. variant is. So right. after Avengers, he went directly to the TVA. Okay, swear, fair enough. But then he didn't like come back from the TVA after season two until like the next big movie. Right. They yeah. could say that. Yeah. And, and we don't even know what reality he's in because we're in a reality where Mobius doesn't know who he is. I know. Here's the thing. I would. I don't want to see Loki in Love and Thunder, and here's why. Because I think I want to see a Thor movie without Loki. Also, I think it would kind of trash the 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 show a little bit. It would well, kind it would of trash the show. It trashes um, if, uh, Endgame. Yeah. It, because that completely derails a great emotional arc. Thor has to continue to think that Loki's dead. Yes. And Loki, and uh, this Loki can never run into Thor in, 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 in the Thor that we know because, yeah. Maybe like a couple because, of years from now you in kill, a big, big movie I could see it, but Thor, not in Love and Thunder. By the end of Ragnarok... Mm. To the end of Endgame, Thor actually has one of the best character arcs in that time frame because he, yes, he changes and we have a goofier, fun loving Thor, mm. but at the same time, he loses Asgard. He has to rebuild Asgard, and then not much long after that, some of those, most of those people he saved are killed, and then he watched his brother get killed, and then he go, he finally kills Thanos. Goes into a depression after it because he thought that would make him happy. It just well, made him, revenge never comes. No, it out never the way does. Yeah, revenge never actually makes you happy. No. Yeah. And, and, There's and, always and then what? And you have that emotional arc, and then he finally gets back to being happy again when he's with Steve and Tony, and they save the universe, and he's with the Guardians, and he's finally happy again. That all that emotional weight and all that character growth would absolutely get eliminated mm-hmm. if Loki was in Love and Thunder. Did you see? Uh, since we're off panel, in, in, a compa- in, in any other capacity than him seeing him in a different reality, I don't think would work. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like in the next big event movie, if Chris Hemsworth is still around, um, I think Chris Hemsworth is the same as uh, Hindelson. He'll play Thor until he's dead, probably. But which is fine. I fucking love him as. Did Thor. you see? <laughs> yeah. Did you see uh, that uh, Lego um, is coming out with a new set called Bro Thor's New Asgard? Oh, so it's gonna be Chunky it Thor. Is, it is literally Chunky Thor, Korg, and like a little. Oh yeah, I did a see little that. Head of Meek. I've never, I've never wanted a Lego set until I've seen that. I was, they also got a bunch of what if sets coming out too, which is oh, going to be cool. Like, and they're finally coming yeah. out with an Iron Monger set. Also, think about that. Taika Waititi is a crazy son of a bitch. He shows up in the MCU. He's like, I'll do the next Thor movie. I'll make it a comedy, and I want to be a rock guy. That's not the thing. Did you see the and then, free guy reaction? Yeah, yeah I have. Awesome. Well, that's what I was getting at. Was like the fact that. <laughs> 
Taika Waititi just fucking shows up in the MCU late in the game and then be- makes one of the most beloved wholesome characters in the whole universe that he got himself into fucking end game just being like hey he's doing a ginthal he's yelling at me you know like he's super mad and why does he have a kiwi accent oh fuck it it's taika waititi taika waititi and then he goes you know what i'll bring core back in the next thor movie i make like what the hell i love it so much i love that he they gave him thor like it's such a weird partnership that works and again, I think if Loki it's, were to show up in that, yeah, it would kind of kill tapped, what he's trying to do. He tapped into um, the weirder aspects the of the cosmic Thor. aspect. Yeah, the alien, the, the Kirby. Yeah, cosmos. He kind of melded those together, and kind of a little bit of Ditko yeah. too. Uh, but um, can I? Can yeah. I? While we're talking about Phase Four and mm-hmm. you know Loki, how it ties in the future, like, can I pitch you an idea? Have you read the current Thor run right now that uh, Donnie? I have not been reading Donnie that, no. Coates. Donnie right. Cates. Donnie no. Cates. Uh, uh, I am reading Beta Ray Bill, though. In that, and I've only, I haven't read past the- Bring uh, me Beta Ray Bill in the MCU, I'm halfway through the fucking first, bastards. I'm halfway through the first arc because it's on uh, Comixology Unlimited. And oh, okay. uh, Thor mm. becomes the Herald of Thunder for Galactus. I've read about that. Uh, I read those CBR. There's a thing that he called... CBR.com and uh, yeah, cause you know, Screen Rant. You know, he, uh, Donnie, two, yeah. Donnie loves to... Uh, Dude, he's badass. He loves to just retcon. Silver Surfer, Bla- Silver Surfer Black was one of the best... It's this thing called the Black Winter. Okay. Coming. And Galactus shows up on Asgard mm. and tells Thor about it. And Thor says, I'll help you. And he goes, no, you're not going to help me. And just help me. And then Galactus shoots the power cosmic into Thor. So now Thor is... Like he the, needs it. And the dude, the last the last page is a splash page. <laughs> and it's... Because this is what I love about Donnie. He loves his mythology and gods and shit. But the last page is him getting black... Like Thor sitting there getting a new costume. It was like this black and blue like lightning running through him and it's like you'll be my herald of thunder and it's one of those things where i look at it and i see the art and it's so great i just go i fucking love comic books dude like i just it's one of those you know you see those splash pages where you're like fucking god this is gonna be cool and then you know Mm. i read more of it and it's really it's a really cool story he fights beta ray bill at one point uh because beta ray bill's like why the fuck are you helping galactus and And he's like uh, no you need to understand my enemy of my and this uh this This series comes out of the fact that thor destroys stormbreaker during that fight he does this whole this whole series is about him finding a new Oh, the Beta Ray Bill miniseries. We'll talk about your comics that you brought. But I uh, brought comics. I'm wondering, like, what if Love and Thunder sets? What if that's another thing they could set in motion to towards Galactus is having Thor being the Herald of Thunder or something mm. like that. I they, think you not, can't, not in Love and Thunder. I think it'd be late in the like later. I could see that, but you can't have Galactus without Silver Surfer, and you can't have. And I think you have to. I feel like Galactus should be. A Fantastic, Fantastic Four, Four because they were the first to beat him. You gotta him. bring in the ultimate nullifier, man. Well, if you're gonna do that, do the fucking. The only way I would allow it would be really cool, and they wouldn't do this, but I would love it because it'd be such a departure from the MCU whole. Do the Marvel storyline, but have have Phil Sheldon following the Fantastic Four as they fight Galactus because they they uh uh Marvel released a, po- a scripted podcast called Marvels and it is based. On that, it's a it's a offshoot of that story. It's um, who's the guy? Uh, ben uh, Grimm, Ben oh. Ben Riley, Ben Riley. Yeah, the writer, the the journalist in the in the MCU. Yeah, he's oh, ben, a, ben Urich. Ben Urich, yes, yes, the one that was played excellently by Vondi Curtis Hall. Do you know who plays him in this comic or in this uh, podcast? Mm. Uh, Red Man. Nice. No, no, no. Meth, method Man. Method nice. Man. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. I haven't listened to it yet, but I would love to see that Fantastic Four movie where it's like it, it's from Phil Sheldon's point of view uh, of the fight with Galactus. You but definitely. The that's thing not going to happen. Is, the thing that really sucks is because Fox fucked it up three times. You can't. It, Feige knows this. You can't have Dr. Doom be the fucking antagonist yeah. in the first one out of the MCU. Yeah. It's got to be Mole Man or Galactus. And the problem with it being Galactus is that's too much. 
the, you, you're taking Galactus the stakes from is, nothing and just going boom. Yeah, because Galactus is a big bad. Like you have, I think you saved that for the second Fantastic Four movie. Yeah. And I think honestly, and, and I do think they did it right in the early odds with that, with with having Doom be the the villain in one, and then Galactus in two. It's just they obviously fucked up the execution. Well, one and one and two are not terrible movies. Yeah, uh, they, they just again the execution they're, they're was just really cheap, flawed. dude. They're so fucking cheesy. They're okay to watch, but yeah, they're, they're hard campy. to watch. But the thir- the Fantastic Four, that one, oh my god, it's unwatchable. The fan four it's stick, fucking yeah, four fantist, <laughs> yeah. But, but uh, but, um, uh, and you're right. I think Galactus is such a big villain because it, you know it's like Thanos and Kang and, and Galactus and, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, I'm sure I'm leaving one out. That that's a big bad that they could probably do, but um, they can't really do Magneto yet. I the the problem with X Men. Mm-hmm. That I have going forward, and whenever they show up in the MCU, this will be the third time we've seen Magneto. This will be the third time we've seen Professor X. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get a new Wolverine, which is fine. Um, and you and that's the thing too. You could even tie in that Fox universe if you wanted to be like, that's a different version of us. You know. Uh, by, uh, by the way, let me just say this um, for all of you, which idiots is fine, by who the way. are pissed. Third off time we'll see Cyclops rumored- again. The rumored POC, um, you know, changes being made to Fantastic Four and X Men and stuff. Um, I, they're fictional characters. I and, saw, and uh, I, I don't have any problem with like a Black Reed Richards. Well, I saw a guy online point out that the beauty of Wolverine's character, mm-hmm. uh, if we were to do something like this with X Men, is Wolverine's character is created to be ambiguous because he doesn't remember who he is. He mm-hmm. doesn't. The only characteristics are that he's short, got the claws, got the mutton chops and he's from Canada. <laughs> and some guy was pitching that you can make him native American or an indigenous, uh, Canadian. He had, a, he had an indigenous girlfriend for a while. So I'm Fox. saying like, do you know how cool that would be to see a fucking indigenous Wolverine? Cause it'd be a new take. Now something cool. Yeah. And you could, you know, you could base, uh, you know, and I don't know. I like to think. See, though, now, now I'm now I as like I'm, to think you know what? Fuck that. No, as, as no. I'm writing, as I'm saying this out loud, I'm like, I could write a, a character like that, right? And I would prefer that. No, no, I'm not letting them have my ideas. Well, I'm no. But here's what I'm saying: is that Wolverine, part of his character arc, and part of his character is that he is so discombobulated, not only by not who he, by not knowing who he is, but also by the the trappings of the modern world and the things that the modern world has done to him. I think if you made him Native American in the modern world, it would work. But if you made him a Native American like back before European expansion, it wouldn't. No, that's what I mean. He would be a modern indigenous person. I believe that Wolverine back in those times, I think if he existed, would have been much more at peace. Um, And No, what I'm saying is Marvel can't have my idea. Let me let me write the Indigenous Wolverine story. Yeah. Actually, no. Give it to an indigenous person. Somebody but, that actually, you know, knows what they're talking about. I'm just a dude. But what I'm saying is, I mean, I, I don't have any problem with like, um, you know, they were talking about. I think I can't remember. Just give who, me writing credit. No, I can't remember who they were talking about. They were talking about making B- Magneto and uh, uh, Professor X black. Uh, and yeah. One, well, of, and one of the actors was uh, Denzel. And I'm like, that's. I fine. wouldn't mind that. I don't. I wouldn't care. No, because it's, Cause it's an adaptation. It's a different story. Also, it's not about, like, do you think when we're talking about Jonathan Majors and Journey Smollett that we're thinking that, did we say black actress and actor? No, because that's not the point. The point is that they're amazing actors. It's kind of like how actresses want to be just called actors and comedians want to just be called comedians. Yeah. Because we shouldn't have a distinction, actor and actress. And yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying is like, I. I like Jonathan Majors because he is a fantastic the char- the character, actor. The characters should be good enough. He also doesn't. happens to yeah. be black, but that's not why he's a great actor. Yeah. So that's... No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But I, I'm just pissed that they didn't get a real purple actor for Thanos. <laughs> right? Sons of bitches. You fuckers. No, what you're saying is the character should be good enough on its Talk own. Talk about cancel culture. You you get attached to the character, not their skin color. So right. it shouldn't matter if their skin color is different, if it's still true to the character. If it's well written enough and yeah. well acted enough, it doesn't matter to me. Exactly. I, and, th- and that's why, but I was just saying with like, I was pushing for an indigenous Wolverine yeah. because it's still true to his character. And like you said, mm-hmm. if you put it in the setting that it is in modern settings, 
it could be even more impactful to the character because it would be, you know, and again, Marvel, get an indigenous <laughs> person to write this because it is, yeah. they can write, they this, would. this could be such an impactful, cool story yeah. and get it from, don't, Especially get, with don't give the yeah. writing credit to me, a white guy, yeah. give it to, give it to somebody that actually has experience with Look this at stuff. you being all woke and shit. Yeah, dude. If you can't, well, I'm not, yeah, you can't cancel me. <laughs> so, um, we've gone way off topic, but you know what? That's no, kind it's of fine, the show. It is, it is tied to that idea of what, what we think could happen with the, with the possibilities. Right. Of the multiverse in phase four. But, but since we're kind of getting close to the end, do you want to rank our... Um, that's what I was thinking is maybe we could get to those rankings yeah. a little bit. All right. Um, you said yours was I'll go first. Me. We're going to rank all I want to go three. three to one. Okay. Three to one. All right. So for, uh, for me, at number three, and keep in mind... I'm ready to be blown away. <laughs> keep in mind, both of us love these shows. Yeah, but I, it's I, tough to put them yeah. in. And know. I'm just putting them in this spot in last place because I, you know, if we're going to rank them, right? Number three is Falcon and Winter Soldier. Mm. Mm. The reason it's number three, mm-hmm. while I did think it was great to have, uh, was uh, Isaiah, um, God, I always remember these names. Uh, Isaiah. Uh, the Black Captain America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Isaiah Washington? No. Anyway. Having him in there and having that storyline is good. Isaiah Bradley. Bradley, yeah. Uh, Isaiah Bradley being in pa- being a part of it and having that storyline is great, impactful. There's a lot of great character moments with Sam and Bucky. Mm. However, I don't know if it needs to exist because... It could have been Captain you, America 4. You, yeah, you could have made that. I'll go with you on that. You could have put that into a movie. Absolutely. That yeah. could have worked as a movie. You didn't need six episodes, but I get. You, I, but I also get why you wouldn't want to like have the 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 Falcon and Winter Soldier poster for a movie called Captain America Four. Yeah, because then it's like, well, duh. Yeah. Well, and hey, I get. And, and, and my own my, my hope out of that though that it, in the fourth one it's Captain America and the White Wolf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they alluded to that. But anyway. yeah, what's your number three? Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, I'm willing to bet ours are pretty similar. I'm going to go ahead and say that one. Um, Oh wow. I th- see. I thought you and I were, I thought you were going to put one division last and then captain America. Uh, no, actually as much as you love captain. You know America. what? Um, I'm <sighs> okay. No, but, I'm not trying to sway your vote here. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm actually trying to figure out who I'm going to put two and one. Um, but I know Falcon and winter soldier uh, largely for the same reasons you have, um, that, you know, I think it could have been a very effective Captain America four. I love that Mackie is going to do a Captain America four. That's yeah. cool as hell. Um, I hope they fucking bring back. I hope they bring out like the the crazy well, comic book it, version. Well, I hope they bring out Modok. Bring me uh, Modok. Well, uh, did you know? Well, <laughs> as I said in the announcement, the the people that wrote the show mm. are writing the movie. Yeah, so. um, which I love. I love that continuity. But here's here's the reason why it's it's tough to make it three is because I enjoyed the other two so much more, and the reason why it's hard for me to put it three because it was so good is because of how relevant it was to our current state of affairs yeah. in society. Um, not well, to get what I all, mean, there's a lot of good, char- there's a lot of it. good character development, right? Not to get all into it, but there's a, a lot of very poignant and very relevant, right? Points, especially being made after about la- this show, especially it, after last year, yeah, about society and whatnot. And so that's why I liked it. I loved Erin Kellyman. Um, I just realized she's she was in Solo. She was uh, Enfys Nest. Oh. I forgot about that until yeah. I saw it the other day. She's really recognizable, and as a redhead with freckles, I am a big fan. <laughs> but um, I, I I liked how they I, I liked it, and also here's another reason why it's got to be number three. One of the, one bad thing I got to talk about the Sharon Carter power broker thing. Yeah. Fuck off! That was stupid, ill advised, and it fell flat. It fell flat, dude. Eh. I mean, it, fell flat. It, it was pretty obvious she was the power broker. <laughs> I know, but the point no, that's is, what I'm is saying, like, that's what I'm saying right, is like, like that was the problem. It wasn't executed well enough. No, and then we could have been effective if they had done it. I just, I, I again, I and I and I think. And now she's a bad guy. Which Agent Thirteen in the comics well, is another, a traitor. Here's another problem. She is. Here's a problem. I think that these shows would have been better if they didn't have to deal with COVID. I think COVID kind of threw off okay. everything. 
because uh, the Black Widow end credit scene. Yeah, that was supposed to be her first introduction of that that certain character. Oh, spoiler! Yeah, thank you. But she does you shit. But she does show up in these first, and yeah. I think it works better. Yeah, it does. Because honestly, if that wouldn't have happened, I would have been like, "Wait a minute, what?" And then I then I would have had been like, "Oh, she's." You know, and then I'd have to look her up. If you've watched the sh- MCU shows, you know who now it is. But uh, she's Lady Hydra or whatever. So it'll be interesting. And it is suck. Of th- setting up the dark. It Avengers. does. It, but it kind of sucks. I thought they were gonna go Thunderbolts, but maybe, maybe Dark Avengers. Dark Avengers because you have a uh, U.S. agent as Captain give me America. A, give me a fucking Thunderbolts. You show. have. Give me Flo- Tyler. Yep, yep. Give me a fucking Thunderbolts. You have show. Yelena Belova as Black Widow. You get Venom to be Spider Man. <laughs> You reveal the existence of Dakin yeah. and make him Wolverine. Yeah. I don't know. Hey. I don't know. I don't know about fuck that. you. I don't, no. know. I don't know if I'm on board with that. <laughs> no, give me, fuck. A, give me a Suicide Squad type group. Doom Patrol, by give, the way. I mean, let's be honest. Thunderbolts. Excellent show. Let's be honest. Thunderbolts is the analog to Suicide Squad. You don't like Thunderbolts? I'm saying you can make a fun because it's such a ripoff. It's not a ripoff. It is its own thing. The concept. They're all ripping each other off. I know. The concept anyway, is so yeah, but what I was going to say is I would love to see a Thunderbolts show, mm. but I would be, I wanted to be on like Hulu mm. so you could be a little more hard R. Um, I'm going to do my number two first because okay. you got to do number three, but you get to do number one and I'm willing to bet again that we're both very Probably similar. Probably going to match. Yeah. WandaVision. And my number two. Um, and that is also mine. So I knew that our, our, our lists are the same. <laughs> I think we both like Loki for number one for a couple of same reasons is that it just happened. And also yeah. it was a bigger. The, why why, why well, is one division number two? Well, the, the, we talked about me doing something like where I talked about the expectations for each yes. show. The expectations for one division were so high and I got caught up in that shit. Yeah. Paul Bettany said that thing about I've well, never worked with this help. actor before. Yeah. He was talking about himself. And then you bring in Evan Peters from Fox X Men as a complete fucking red herring. Yeah, but he was great. I loved the Halloween episode because you got to see his fucking stupid hair from the comics. Yeah. <laughs> Did they not realize that someday it might be in live action and those hairstyles would look fucking ridiculous? I, I don't think they did. Probably not. <laughs> um. <clears throat> um. So the expectations were really high. I think even at the very end of the show, people were still expecting the big reveal to be Mephisto. Yeah. Like Agatha was working, for, right? Yeah. It was a fantastic show. I love <clears throat> one of the reasons why it's two and not three is because quite simply, they took chances that the MCU hadn't taken yet yeah. and it fucking worked. Yeah. The first episode of that show is fantastic. Like, I've watched it a couple of different times. Yeah. Uh, since since and it's just because there's no real exposition about the outside world yet. Yeah. The first episode is just a self-contained 50s style sitcom and then there's a couple of parts where um like when he's choking where just all the laughter stops and it's yeah. just it goes from sitcom to like multi-angle or, or them communicating through the radio and it and- just gets really dark. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I really, really, really enjoyed those those first couple episodes because yeah, it's like, what the it's, fuck is going on? You know, and it's like I was saying, it, it, it kind of set the tone of what these were, which mm-hmm. were very f- character-focused stories. Yeah. And, and it, it was a it's, great... It's a g- interesting... And it's true to... Photon is and, cool. And it's true to Wanda. Like, that's who Wanda right. is as a character. And and uh, to, to really just be a show about grief mm, yeah. in, in this world of aliens and portals and magic and all this crazy shit uh, to, to, to step back. Yeah. And to step back and do a very character driven story about grieving and death. And mm. it, it was interesting. That's and, my number two, but Loki is obviously number one for both of us mm. because do I you mean, have anything to add to water vision besides that? No. Okay. Uh, with, good, good but, show. but Loki, the reason I, I loved it, we've already pretty much went through it. Uh, the fact that it's a time, co- time cop buddy comedy, mm. The fact that it has larger scale implications, how they've opened the floodgates of a, uh, a, a multiverse. I'm fucking excited to it's, see what they're going to yeah. do, dude. I I think this was Marvel at its... Isn't Feige making a Star Wars movie now, too, you son of a bitch? <laughs> I don't know. The, the guy could do no wrong. Well, well, I think this is a smart... Or I think this is a good way to... 
uh, lead people into this idea of multiverses and, and all these other things. And, and, and I, and I, yeah, Hiddleston continues to kill it as his character and mm. it was fun. It was fun to see him. And I think it's a good sign. And I, and what we were talking about earlier, I think this is a way for people at Marvel to understand that, Hey, Loki can exist without Thor. Thor can exist without Loki. They're, they're strong enough characters on their own mm. that they can drive their own stories. And and uh, despite the fact that it was originally going to be Falcon, Winter Soldier, WandaVision, yeah, the and order, then Loki. the order got all fucked up. Here's the great part is that it, it worked out for the best because WandaVision, all the expectations were so high about a reveal. It was something they'd never done before, which I don't think would have worked if you had already seen Falcon and Winter Soldier. You know what I mean? I think that would have no. killed it a little bit. Because you have a straightforward show and then this weird thing. So you start off with the weird thing. Which is weird that they do that. I was just thinking about that. Sorry. Because the way they would have done it but no, wouldn't have been it like, what? It kind of changed the reality of how they released because you're right. It, it went to like this mystical place to... Grounded. Grounded. Back to mystical, mystical with Loki. Back to grounded with, with uh, Black Widow. You yeah. kind of have those like espionage style mm-hmm. grounded ones to balance out the but more what I'm fan- saying fantastic is ones. If, Sorry, I didn't mean. No, to- no, you're 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 right. Uh, you're you're expounding exactly on what I'm saying. Like if if your first introduction to the MCU Disney Plus shows, yeah. is Falcon and Winter Soldier, and then you get WandaVision. I don't know that it works. As yeah. well, but here's the and other they, thing. Especially if you go from that to Loki, right? You have all of right. You have all of those. That might have worked actually. That transition, but yeah, um, no, that would have worked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then you would have been like, wait, whatever. You can't anyway. put Captain. You cannot put Falcon and Winter Soldier after this because you're going to be like, what the fuck is? You this? have WandaVision with all these expectations of a reveal, and then at the end, people are disappointed. Then you got Falcon and Winter Soldier, which doesn't have that many expectations of a reveal, so people aren't disappointed. They still love both the shows and everything. They go into Loki going, all right, now Loki's up. Man, we've been waiting a couple of weeks since uh, you know Falcon and Winter Soldier ended. I'm just like ready a for a fun ride. And that's when they drop the fucking bomb, dude. Nobody's expecting it. I mean, by the, by the final episode, you are. Well, but I, the I'll first be, couple I'll episodes, with you, you're uh, not thinking a I huge reveal. I didn't know it was going to happen in the last episode. Right? Yeah. You know, whereas, whereas Falcon and Winter Soldier, you knew that Sam was going to wear the suit. I think the impact of Loki's ending is so much greater because of that. Wow. Those false I, I, expectations that we had for one. I, I am surprised that we, you and I, both agreed. Because uh, I know how much you love Captain America, so I, I was a little surprised. But yeah, honestly, of the three, I think Captain America. Like I keep saying, Captain America. That should have been Captain America four. And I think these. Are, and I think WandaVision and Loki actually work better as shows. Yeah. Although I did say that I do think that they could have. Um, uh, they could have maybe cut some corners on some of the episodes, or maybe maybe. And we talked episode. about yeah the episodes. episodes right. I think episode three is. I think universally everybody agrees that episode three is kind of a, <laughs> kind of a weird episode. Right. Uh, j- just because it, it it. There's some Easter eggs be, in it. Well, it's because it's it's just weird pacing. Yeah. Uh, to to have the the level of excitement of like you finally get the reveal, you finally have that moment, and then you go into three, and it's like, well, let's slow everything down. Here's and an have, hour have character of, moments. Yeah. Which again is understandable in a movie it's understandable in a in a in a, in a two hour plot but I'm an American I ain't got yeah. no patience so I need to see some yeah. fucking fighting and fucking it was six episodes could have been five there I said it <laughs> or at least made at least made it longer to be fair it was so short to be fair our, our one two three is Loki uh, WandaVision. Uh, WandaVision and Falcon Winter Soldier to be fair it's like 3.1, 3, and 2.9. They're all really fucking good episodes yeah. or shows. It's just if we They're have to, if we anyway. have to rank the three of them in a one, two, three format, that's the way I have to do it. Mm-hmm. But they're all. I loved the fucking moment when Sam came out with his fucking suit on, dude. Because I, I do love Captain dude, I America. Teared, I teared up, man. Fuck yeah. When he caught that. When he caught that. Um, when he caught the the. Uh, SU, the armored car coming yeah. off the side. He caught yeah. it with his wings and pushed it back up. I welled up a little bit because I was like, I want to see these characters be heroic. I love seeing these moments. And it's nice to yeah. to see a guy that's been playing this character for seven years finally get his due, yeah. finally get acknowledged. And, 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 and Anthony Macri, I, I've he's been... So much fun to watch throughout these movies. Yeah, and, and I'm so I was just so happy to see him do something really cool and heroic. And I do got to say this, um, just it's not really political. It's more about people who enjoy stories and why and whatever. But yeah, um, 
there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of controversy and outcry from a certain aspect of the population when Captain America became black in the comics, and the the thought that it's a, a, a cancel culture thing or that it's a a, a, a a response to the woke culture whatever is ridiculous because a Falcon has been Captain America's like uh, partner for decades in the comic yeah. books okay. And uh, B, actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Do you know how many more things Sam Wilson can do with that shield and as Captain America than fucking Steve Rogers can? Yeah. Whether you make Sam Wilson white and nobody gives a shit on that from that portion of the population that I'm talking about, right? Am I right? Well, nobody would care. Nobody would bat an eye. But the fact that they don't, they look at that aspect of it instead of wow, how much cooler. It's it's almost like getting a new Captain America to write from a different perspective, you can d- have him do all these different things with his wings well, and, and the and, shield. And that's the thing I wanted to point out when I, it ties back to I'm the, excited. the... I was excited to see all the things look, he did with look, his shield. I, I, and, well, and, right. And, yeah. I, and I want to tie it back to the indigenous Wolverine idea. Right. When you, you had um, black writers mm-hmm. write this story and, and you had Anthony Mackey's input on Sam and yeah. his experience as a black man. And that's what I'm saying is I am all for getting people from, di- and that is what Captain America has always been about. That's what these stories have always been about. We want to include everybody and let them have a voice because we're all better when we all have that, you know? And, and when you see something And that's in what a it movie- says, by the way, what they were getting mad about with that Captain America book was he was saying the American dream is a lie if we don't allow everybody in, is what he was saying is we need to be more inclusive. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which also, is what, just what Steve Rogers has always said. Also, if you read the entire speech, it's fucking fantastic. And it's an excellent fucking anyway. book, dude. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up mm-hmm. because I am currently looking at United States of Captain America number one. I brought it. This is a whole new segment that I'm just making up right now on the fly because you brought me so many of these books. Uh, I love comic books. This is uh, the segment called Tyler's Long Box. Ooh, whoa. It's long. It's long. <laughs> and it's a box. <laughs> That's only comic t-shirt. Book, only comic book readers are going to get that. Anybody, no, uh, yeah. We're going to have somebody, Anybody, if somebody has never walked foot into a comic book shop. I'm going to be like, what the fuck? We're going to have a drawing of, a, of me with like yeah. a big old box coming out of my pants. So right now I'm looking at United States of Captain America. Mm. What else did you bring today? I brought uh, the Beta Ray Bill uh, series up to four because I think it's only in four. Uh, Daniel Warren Johnson is fantastic art. Check out some of that. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, the Beta Ray Bill. So These the are remnants this, of what I bought last. I, as, as you mentioned earlier, uh, the Beta Ray Bill story is tied to the current Thor run because Thor does break Stormbreaker mm. uh, in that arc. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, this whole, as you mentioned earlier, this whole miniseries is him getting, is how Beta Ray Bill got his groove back. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. So I'll check um, that out. And then I brought us a bunch of X books, which I think we might talk about next week. Yeah. Well, no, next week is. Uh, Green Lantern Earth One, uh, but uh, yes, X Men. But uh, planet sized X Men. Yeah. Pepe Larraz is the artist on. I think he was Powers of X. Yeah. Um, no, the artists on X Men right now are fucking fantastic. Unreal. Yeah, R- R- R.B. Silva is the guy I think on House. Um, but yeah, I mean, just uh, just because we are talking long box and and we are on the air for just a little bit more, I just want to show Jake some of the fucking artwork. <laughs> from this fucking thing where they fucking terraform fucking Mars. Yeah, planet size X-Men. That's, I, I mean, mean yeah. making the poles. Like, it's, I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Just amazing. I, I do, um, yeah, we'll definitely get, I, I, and we touched on it. Put in, it back in the bag. In, ep, in episode, in uh, episode <laughs> zero, we touched on a little bit of Hawks Pox, but uh, we, we will, we will go there. Yeah, Black Knight. What is, what is, I've heard about this. What is Black Knight? It's, <sighs> So he's a fan favorite for some reason. I had never no, thought is that so. Nova Core armor? Huh? His no. helmet looks like Nova Core. No, it's just the way his helmet is. Uh-huh. No. Um, but uh, it's kind of, I'm trying to get into Black Knight so that I care about him when the Eternals comes out. Yeah. Because I never really have. Now, I grew up in a segment uh, in a time when Black Knight was a huge part, albeit periphery, of the uh, main Avengers team. He always seemed to be in that book. Um, There was an actual uh, really excellent arc that tied into Thor where he became fused to his own blade and he wore this special armor and eventually just became a living embodiment of the Ebony 
uh, blade huh. and fucking Thor uses him to destroy set the 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 god of death and restore Odin and restore Asgard. Jeez. But it's really cool because one of the variant covers is from a very famous Thor issue is Thor and Black Knight back to, uh, back to back fighting against all these Egyptian gods. And uh, the one previous to this, the variant was just some other artist drawing the same thing. Oh. It was really cool. Alrighty, so that was. I'm a nerd. Oh, and you're asking why are we doing? Why is it only Tyler's long box? Because uh, I mostly read my comics digitally. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, no, but uh, in terms of Jake's I, uh, I, long I'm box, old. I uh, I will give you my copy of uh, Green Lantern Earth One Volume oh. One, uh, mm-hmm. which I've already read, but I want to reread it. Yeah, and I am reading Volume Two. So we'll uh, we'll be doing those for the next few uh, weeks, or maybe maybe we'll take. I don't know what I was doing just there. I don't know. Maybe we'll take a break between volume two. I don't know, but uh, look out for that episode coming soon. <laughs> and uh, thanks so much. Would you stop? <laughs> thanks so much for listening to the first official episode of uh, Off Panel Off Topic. Off Panel Off Topic with Jake and Tyler. Meow. <laughs> meow. 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 You oh. stop that laughing, right, meow? That's true. Mm. What the fuck was that? Was and, I trying to? Were you trying to purr? And meow, the news. I hate you. Uh, so yeah, check back with us next week because we're going to be covering mostly Green Lantern mm. Earth One Volume One. We'll be going to the DC side of the universe. Yes. Did you see that meme with uh, Homer Simpson and he's got the box and it's the MCU Extended Universe? And it's from when in The Simpsons he tried to make the backyard barbecue. <laughs> Why yeah. does the mind look like that? <laughs> that fucking episode is great. Uh, it's true. Mm. It's true. But I honestly, DC, keep doing what you're doing, man. Seriously. It, it's working well, for you. I'm excited for the Batman. I'm wondering what they could do with that and make it different. I'm, I'm okay with them doing just all self-contained films. Yeah. That's well, well that with, Our, MCU will have you seen the, be that. Have you seen the photos of Keaton? For oh. on, on Flash, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. I, I got a feeling. Anyway, thanks so much for listening to our first official episode. And if you checked out episode Z, number zero or the one shots of the uh, bunker audio logs that were never released to the public until now never. because nobody gave us any money. Sons of bitches. <laughs> but that was from uh, when we used to do a Patreon show from, for uh, Tinfoil Radio, and it fits this topic because it's much more pop culture and comic book related. So thank you so much, and we will see you next week when we're talking Green Lantern, Earth One, Volume One, and a whole lot of other shit. Mm. A whole lot mm, of bullshit. Mm, mm. See you next time, true believers. See you next time, true... Wait, what are we doing for the ending? I don't know. Um, she just end it. Hey, you want to be off panel? Well, I'll be off topic. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beers no, not and me. smoking I'm, not weed. Me. I'm married. Yeah, we're married. Jake. Yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> no. Off panel, off topic. With Jake and Tyler.